to be here once again to share the Word of God. Uh, I see one group here, one group there, another group there, another group at the back. Uh, anyway, thank you for being here. Uh, what are we here for? Uh, we are here to praise our God. Uh, we are here to hear His Word and we are here to pray for one another. And we are here to fellowship with one another. And above all, we are here to witness for Christ. As you can see on the slide, today we are going to talk about the power of the Spirit. So when we talk about the power of the Spirit. I'm sure every one of us is interested in having some form of power, right? Uh, here, I have a few <laughs> Marvel characters, superheroes. You can pick your, choose, uh, your, your choice, okay? But do you know what is my choice? <laughs> my choice is this one. <laughs> because that was the, the first superhero movie I have seen uh, in Singapore. Uh, Superman. I watched it. I watched it uh, a few times, you know. Uh, why, why people like this kind of movie. Because they can do things that many people cannot, right? Like Superman, he can fly, right? Oh, I wish I could fly. I can fly in a plane, but not like Superman, you know? Fly on, uh, on his own. Power. Today, power is not here. Super and power, they are not here. <laughs> power is something we want because we'll be able to do things that other people cannot. So this is the power. But when we talk about the power of the Spirit, we need to know the Gojaro. Today, we will look at, uh, look at it. Okay? Uh, I will... I will base on the book of Acts, chapter 1 and 2, and we will look at how we are related to the power of the Spirit. What have we got to do with the power of the Spirit? Is it something that happening elsewhere, you know? No? When we Look at the book of Acts. Our Lord Jesus reminded his disciples to stay, to remain in Jerusalem. And the reason why he asked them to remain in Jerusalem is so that they will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So that they will receive the power. Of the Spirit. So, what is this power for? The Bible says that this power is mainly to witness, is to witness, to witness uh, to the person of Christ. Krito Jango, Adika, that they can work here. We need to go to Actually, uh, Pastor Yewen and I already talked about it, you know, at the beginning of the year. Huh? So I want to elaborate on this, you know. The power is for witnessing. How I became a Christian, maybe i give you a little bit of my, my testimony, you know. I came here in 1983, you know, when I was 15 years old, 
Started at SEC 2, SEC 3, SEC 4. After that, I went to Singapore Poly. And while I was studying there, people from, from uh, Campus Crusade, they came and they preached to me about Jesus Christ. They witnessed to me about Christ. So when they do that a few times, I was converted. I became a, a believer. How I became a believer is through their preaching, right? It is through their preaching. When we talk about power of witness, preaching, preaching is what we what we do, no? The main thing that we do, preaching. So when we talk about the power of the Spirit, it is mainly to witness. And how do we witness? By preaching. And because of their preaching, I became a believer. Because the Bible says, right, the gospel of God, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. The power of God unto salvation. That means the gospel can convert you to become a believer. It converted me to, be, to become a, a believer. Do you think it was easy for me to convert? To change my, my whole, whole mind, the whole mind, you know? My whole... Uh, Values, you know, to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. It, it, it was humanly impossible. Humanly, it was impossible, but by the power of the Spirit, which was expressed through their preaching, that I became a believer. To do ye, when you know to go up here, we are it. So, the power of the Spirit, that's how it expresses itself, through preaching. I'm not sure whether you have ever witnessed for Christ, I mean to your friends or to your family members. How many, how many of you have done that? Okay, I hope that uh, most of you, if not all of you, have experienced this power of the Spirit in your conversion. Have you? <laughs> I hope you have, okay? If not, I hope tonight you go back home, <laughs> you, you go into your room or somewhere quiet and, you know, uh, uh, please pray the sinner's prayer, okay? Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Please save me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me, okay? You do that. I did that many times, you know. So the, the power, okay, is expressed in preaching. Of course, not preaching to the unbelievers, even to the believers, you know. Unless you are empowered by the power of the Spirit, you won't be able to preach effectively. I can, I can preach effectively if the Spirit doesn't give me its power, His power. So, here you can see, right? On the day of Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit was poured upon His disciples, what was the first thing they did? They preached. Of course, they, they, they preached in a strange language, right? But the string language is not really a string language. It's a language that a group of people uses, like Chinese, Burmese, Karen, or Kachin, or things like that. No? It's a known language, not something that uh, uh, nobody understands. The Bible says that they were, they were speaking. They were speaking the wonders of God. So it is expressed in 
in that preaching, the power of the Spirit. So when they preached there, what happened? Those people who were listening, they were confused. <laughs> right? They were amazed and they were marvel. Huh? Because they were speaking in languages that they, they didn't know at all. You know? So these, these people in Jerusalem, because they came from different countries, right? They were from different race. So that's why they were amazed. That how come these Jews can speak my language? And why these people were experiencing that? It's because the Spirit of God was working in them. That's why they were confused. That's why they, they marvel. You know, when I first heard the, the gospel, I was confused. All the while I thought, if I do something good, I will receive something good back, right? If I do something bad, I will receive something bad, you know? That's, that was my understanding, you know? But here was this guy, a Christian, came to me and told me, hey, do you know that Jesus died for you and he paid the penalty for your sin and you don't have to pay the penalty of your sin yourself. He did it on your behalf. You know? So of course I was confused. <laughs> and of course I was also amazed, right? Wow. Is there such a thing? You know? <laughs> I was confused. I was but at the same time amazed and of course, I, I marvel at them, right? What they were preaching. Why, why was I experiencing that? Because the Spirit of God was working in my heart. I, I hope and I pray that each and every one of you will experience that. You have to experience it. You have to cross the bridge before you can call yourself a Christian or a believer or, you know, a follower of Jesus Christ. You have to cross that bridge. What that bridge? The Spirit of God working in you, telling you that you are a sinner. That actually, you deserve God's wrath. But there is something that God prepared for you. So, when Spirit does that, the Bible records that many of them, actually, 3,000 of them, 3,000 people believe on that day, you know. Can you believe that? 3,000. They heard the preaching of Peter, then they believed and they were baptized. 3,000 of them. Can you imagine 3,000 people at the Jordan River getting baptized one by one? You know that on the 2nd of January, there were 12 of them getting baptized one by one at East Coast, Kappa, F2. You know, in the rain. That was the first time uh, our church did the baptism in the rain. So they, they receive double blessing, you know, from the top and from the bottom. <laughs> from the top is the rain, from the bottom is the sea. <laughs> the rain and the sea, okay? And surprise, surprisingly, uh, 12 of them are uh, all bigger than Siabole. You know, <laughs> in size. <laughs> you can look at, look at John. Yeah, uh, you can look at power, super, right? Those, my son, amen. 
or big size. Uh. So, why was, why was there that 3,000 people believed and baptized? It was the power of the Spirit working through preaching. It was the power of the Spirit working in the hearts of people. ดูเรียนละลงนะเนี่ยมาวิญญาณน้อยลุกซองเจ้าจอมวิญญาณน้อยดีๆเตียหอดจีนเดเดียนี่ลุกซองเจ้าจอมเปียงเลยล่ะคร
Today, I just, I just hope that you will give yourself to experience this power by, of course, first of all, to, to give your heart to Christ and also to continue to, to put yourself in the church, in the fellowship of the saints, in the hearing of the word, in prayer, in communion. Do you know that um, the real power, the real power is you are able to change people's lives. Do you know that? It's not the, the, the money power that you can buy anything you want. You can buy many things you want, but if you want to change people's lives, that you need the power of the Spirit to change yourself and to change other people for good, you know, for good. When we talk about church life, in the church, we have sharing and caring, right? Of course, a healthy church life, a healthy church life involves we care for one another, we share with one another. In a healthy church life, uh, there will be no? Uh, growth in number. So to experience a healthy church life, we need the power of the Spirit to work in us. I'm sure you heard some people say, uh, oh, yeah, this church uh, don't go. La. It's no good. La. People don't care you. La. No? Or, you know, uh, they are only interested in your money or something like that, la, you know? I, I don't know whether you heard this kind of thing, right? Remarks. If you want JBCS, this church, right? This church. If you want this church to be a healthy church where there, is, there are sharing, caring, you know, uh, people's lives are changed for the better, and people, they are being transformed, you know, into the image of Christ, then you yourself need to give yourselves to experience the power of the Spirit. Okay, uh, some of you, maybe you have some problem in your, in your family, right? Or in your studies, or maybe in your relationship, I'm sure some of you are still young for any relationship, all right, but some are starting, huh? Some of, some of you are starting relationship and... John! John starting a relationship? Is that why you wanted to get baptized? <laughs> Take your time, okay, John? Take your time, you know? Choose wisely, okay? <laughs> pray about it, <laughs> okay? Especially pray for the power of the Spirit, all right? So that you will make the, the right choice, okay? Okay, where was I, ah? Okay. <laughs> Any problem that you face, you can ask for the power of the Spirit to solve that. You have to pray. Dear Lord, may the power of your Spirit help me solve this maths problem <laughs> or uh, this difficult relationship or maybe John, huh? may the Spirit of the Lord touch her heart to love me 
Is that John? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he nod his head. Okay. You can pray. You can ask for it. Because it is there for you to ask. It is there for you to use. Because you know, right? The Bible says, our God has given His Spirit to us. Has given to you, you know. It's given to you. It's whether you want to use that power or not. It is already given to you. Huh, Benson? If you have a problem with your studies, pray. Ask for the power of the Spirit to help you, right? To overcome whatever difficulty you are facing. Right? Please do that. Please ask the Holy Spirit for His power to solve your problem. Because on our own, we can do nothing. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by His Spirit, says the Lord. Okay, Ruby? Ruby is falling asleep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Come, let us pray. Dear Father, I want to commit myself and commit all your children here into your hand. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have given to us. And with that Spirit, Lord, you have also given us His power for us, Lord, to use it for your glory, Lord. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that has changed our lives, has made us believe in you and become your children, Lord. May the power of the Holy Spirit continue, Lord, to, to work in us, to bring us closer to you, to make us more like you, Lord, and to, to face whatever difficulty, whatever challenge that we have squarely, Lord, with the power of the Spirit, Lord that each day we will experience it and we will be able to use it to bring glory and honour to your name, Lord. Lord, I want to bless all your children here that in days to come, there are those who are filled by the Holy Spirit and His power to be able to do things that the world people cannot do, Lord. To be able to witness, Lord. Witness for Christ. And to preach with boldness. And to practice church life healthily, Lord. To receive your word and to have genuine fellowship with one another and mighty in prayer and, and in communion, Lord. Oh, we want to give thanks to you. In our Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all.